There is no compromise. There is no compromise. You give everything you, you have. Give everything. Nice try. Let's go again. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Very warm welcome to you all from here, the iconic McLaren Technology Centre in Woking, Surrey. I'm Simon Lazenby from Sky Sports F1, and I'm delighted to be here today as the world's media, the team's partners and fans, including 20 lucky golden ticket winners, and McLaren Plus Papaya members, and all of you watching this, either online or on Sky Sports F1, witness the live unveiling of McLaren's 2019 Formula One car, the MCL 34. We're here at the home of McLaren, where the team, the people, are very much the theme of today's event. The almost 800 employees that work for McLaren Racing have been part of bringing today's launch to life and getting the MCL 34 to the track for the first time in Barcelona next week. And of course, the car will be driven by an all new lineup for 2019 Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris, who we'll hear from a little later. McLaren, as we know, is a team with a celebrated legacy in Formula One since it first entered the sport with founder Bruce McLaren in 1966. Since then, the team has gone on to achieve multiple successes in the sport with legends such as Emerson Fittipaldi, James Hunt, Nicky Lauda, Alain Prost, Ayrton Senna, Mika Hakkinen, Lewis Hamilton, Jensen Button and Fernando Alonso. But none of their success would have been possible without the efforts of the people behind the scenes that worked so hard through the incredible highs and lows that Formula One brings. Behind me are 34 employees who have each played a role in creating the challenger for 2019, the MCL 34, which they surround. What unites each of them is the McLaren team spirit, especially during what we all know has been a challenging period for the team. The second half of 2018 in particular was very much transitional for McLaren, with a number of changes in personnel and technical leadership at the top of the team, as well as behind the scenes. For 2019, all are fighting to bring the team closer to the front of the grid, a theme very much epitomized by the film we just saw at the start of the show, and that message fearlessly forward. Now, before we get down to business, let's briefly hear from a few team members who have been chosen to represent the army of people here in Woking, working to bring this new season together. And I'm going to join with a man who's brought 36 seasons together, a lifer. I'm not sure that's been called institutionalised, but Barry, tell us a little bit uh, about your story, the changes that you've seen. You must have worked with some legends during your time here at McLaren. Yeah, I certainly have. I uh, started work for McLaren in 1983 uh, on the race team. 84 right through to 89, uh, testing all through the 90s, uh, and I've worked with some amazing world champions, uh, Ayrton Senna and Alan Prost especially. Yeah, on know. the MP44, yeah. obviously. Yeah, Tell me what... 1988 was a spectacular year, as you know, um, and Ayrton's first world title, um, it was special. Still here and still motivated, right? Absolutely. Brilliant 100%, stuff. 100%. Yeah. Great stuff. It's good to hear. Uh, Philippe, tell us a little bit about your story. How long have you been at McLaren? And uh, yeah, what, what do you share with the, the rest of the team? Yeah, so I actually started as an apprentice and I've been here for about seven years now. I work in a machine shop on a 5 axis mill and we make a wide range of various parts for the car, uh, which I've got you guys on MTL 34. Yeah, 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 tell me. I mean, there's 800 people, as we said, 800 employees here uh, at, at MTC. Some of you don't get to the racetrack all the time, but do you still feel just as connected? Do you still feel just as part of the team? Oh, definitely. I mean, even though I'm not based at the racetrack and I'm based in the factory here, mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a good feeling knowing that I've played a part of getting the car out on the racetrack. So it's definitely exciting, yeah. Amelia? You as a performance engineer, you joined as part of the McLaren graduate program. Tell us a little bit about that and tell us about your role here. Yeah, so I started in 2016, as you said, as a graduate engineer on the scheme here, which was a fantastic opportunity to just work in several different departments, learn several different skills, um, before I finally specialised uh, in vehicle performance as a performance engineer. Does it feel like a fresh start? Does it feel like the team is ready to take it to the next level to get back to where many of, or most of the McLaren fans, all of the McLaren fans want it to be at the front of the grid? Yeah, absolutely. As you say, there's been a transitional period at the end of last year, and I think everyone's just really motivated and really fighting to get back to the front. 
Okay, well, the waiting is over. You don't have to hold your breath any longer. Thank you, Amelia. Uh, it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. I'd like to invite our employees who are part of the presentation today to unveil McLaren's 2019 Formula One car, the MCL 34. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the MCL 34. And it's going to be driven by McLaren's first all new driver lineup in 12 years, the first since 2007. It's an exciting one. I'm sure you'll agree with their 24 year old Carlos Sainz and 19 year old Lando Norris. Ladies and gentlemen, McLaren's drivers for 2019. I was going to stay away from the Valentine's Day cliches, but love at first sight, something to make the, uh, the other halves jealous. Carlos? Yeah, love at first sight. Um, definitely a good first car to go racing with. Well, first we need to go testing, of course. And I don't know what you guys think, but I like it. I like the new colors or the new color scheme. I like the new suits, different to McLaren <laughs> before. And, um, and your new teammate as well. <laughs> my new teammate, we will see in a, in a couple of months if I like him or not. I was going to say, this is probably the, you'll probably get on best you'll ever get on right now here at the launch. But Lando, um, you know, you're the youngest ever McLaren driver, youngest ever British F1 driver. Does that put a little bit of weight on the old shoulders coming into the new season? Uh, in some ways, it does. <laughs> Um, you know, I've got a lot to live up to uh, following the drivers from last year and the history of McLaren as well. There's a, there is a lot on my shoulders, a lot, to, um, a lot of people relying on, on myself and Carlos, obviously, but it's not something I think I'll, um, you know, have as a negative effect. I think I'll try and make it a positive effect um, and just, yeah, know that I'll hopefully have a, a longer career in Formula One being at the age I am. Carlos, I know you've been commuting a little bit back and forward uh, between Madrid and here, and you've got a place close to the factory. You've been in here. Um, when you look around this room now and you see the fans and you see uh, the dignitaries, you see the management, uh, and you see the rest of the team, the assembled media, how does it make you feel entering new team? You can see that it's got so much tradition, McLaren. Um, do you feel that weight of responsibility too? Yeah, I definitely start to feel a lot more like home now. Uh, after these three months that I have moved into the UK, uh, it's been a busy winter. I've been here quite a lot. I've done a few simulator sessions, quite a lot of meetings with my new engineers, getting to know each other, getting to review some of the races of last year. And I can say we are, or I feel very prepared for this season. I think we, the car is ready. You know, we could go testing today if we wanted. So that's also a good step on preparation for this year. And now it's time to, to try it, see the strong points, the weak points, and, and keep improving for the rest of the season. 
Go say, Lando, um, with regards to your preparations, a couple of years ago, you know, a driver couldn't sniff at a fruit salad without worrying about the weight they've got to put on. But we had a filming day a couple of days ago. You ate enough meat for three people at lunch. So is, it, is the focus on, on strength? I mean, wh- how have your preparations been going? Uh, that meal was lovely, by the way. <laughs> um, but overall, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very different winter to what I've had to do in the past. A lot more preparation, not just from the physical side of things, which is a huge part and a huge difference from, from Formula 2. It's, um, you know, mentally, the amount of stuff you have going on in Formula 1 is, is uh, another new level. So, uh, like Carlos, I've been going through with my engineers, um, testing on the sim, doing all, all sorts of things to, to prepare for, for Barcelona and Australia to make sure I'm, I'm good to go. I think pragmatism seems to be the order of the day with the team this year. It's just taking uh, each day, each race as it comes. Are you setting yourself any personal goals and what would be your message uh, to the ever-patient McLaren fans of recent times? I think it would be a a big mistake to set ourselves goals at this stage of the year. I think we've set our goal to be more prepared this year, to do our homework better to start the season. Hopefully that pays off. I've seen an incredible amount of work in the factory these two months. Um, we saw the fire up a week ago and how all, every single worker in the factory was there, was there wanting to, to see it, wanting the car to come alive. And yeah, you can see everyone is excited. You can see everyone's put a lot of hard work and effort into this car and, and that's important. But now we need to go testing, as I said before, and see where the car is and from then start going little by little, step by step. Let's not kid ourselves. Your goal is to beat him and your goal is to, to beat him, right? <laughs> Well, I well, guess you can uh, say well, <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, you know, in the, in the position we are as a team at the moment, um, as much as we'd love to do that, and it's every driver's aim, um, I think together, if we want to be back winning races, um, winning championships with McLaren, I think um, the most important thing is we work together as a team to, to get back to that point, and then, and then we can have some more battles when we're, <laughs> when we're racing for podiums and, and hopefully wins. But, you know, until that point, we've got to... Keep working together um, like we've been doing over the winter, um, you know, seeing the whole team and how hard they've, they've worked, uh, the amount of hours they put in is, is uh, second to none. So, yeah, I'm just excited for, for the whole year. Yeah, it's a young, fresh lineup, and I'm sure it's exciting uh, for all the McLaren fans out there. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Carlos Sainz and for Lando Norris. Thank, Thank you. you. So as I was saying, it's been a, a bit of a transitional period, hasn't it, for the McLaren team. Let's invite up a couple of uh, senior managers uh, of the team up here. The CEO, Zach Brown, and Sporting Director, Gilles de Ferrand. <laughs> here she is, in all her glory, Zach. You, we had a little uh, sneak preview, didn't we, the other day on the golf course. What do you, what do you think of... Uh, of what's been produced and how excited are you about uh, the season ahead? Well, we're very excited. You know, car launches is the start of the new season. It's about anticipation, uh, excitement, and appreciation. Uh, So many men and women uh, come together to put this race car together. Uh, I'd like to welcome a a few guests, a special guest, Amanda McLaren. Uh, Without your father, Bruce, I don't think any of us would, would be here, so I'm so pleased that you're at your first McLaren Formula One car launch, from what I understand. So thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, of course, you know, we have the privilege of uh, working uh, very hard for the executive committee. I'd like to recognize Sheikh Mohammed and Mansour Roger, who delivers the vision for McLaren Racing that Jonathan Neal and I work so hard uh, with our racing leadership to uh, put together this piece of art. I'd like to recognize Andrea, Pat, and Simon, who make up our racing leadership that work with, as represented by our 34 uh, great members of McLaren, this, this fantastic group of eight, 850 people. And uh, ultimately, we all do this for our, our great racing fans uh, that joined us because 
this is about putting on show and entertainment. Absolutely, but you've got some new faces joining the team. Tell us about them and, and what, what the long-term goals or medium-term goals uh, for McLaren right now. Uh, well, as you mentioned, you know, we're in a uh, rebuilding process and it's going to be a, uh, a journey. Uh, we have Andreas Seidel, uh, who's going to join us as our managing director and, and lead the Formula One team and just wake up every day. And James Key, uh, technical director, and the, the two of them will work with our existing team uh, to uh, move us uh, move us forward. So quite excited to have them join us here uh, early in the new year. Okay, Jill, tell us about your expanded role, if you like, and, and the feeling within the team right now. I tell you, it's the feeling within the team is, is, is incredible. I think it's a lot of excitement, uh, a lot of anticipation. And, you know, if I cast my mind back to six months ago when I, when I joined the team full time and being in the trenches uh, with, with everyone, uh, thinking about every single decision and now seeing the car here uh, in its full glory, it's, uh, it's really uh, an incredible feeling. I mean, this is a beautiful piece of art. I think it uh, depicts very well uh, all the capabilities that, that McLaren has in terms of craftsmanship and, and engineering. So this is, a, this is an exciting time, I think, as, as you heard, uh, the drivers uh, saying, you know, we we focus a lot on uh, on our preparations uh, towards uh, this year. So uh, I think we're ready. Uh, can't wait to get going. <laughs> well, that seems to be the messaging, right? You're, you're ready. You're ready to take it to the next step. And do you feel that the team is in shape to do that, or it's just still rebuilding? Is that what's well? I, I think the way we tackled it is is uh, to recognize all the challenges that, that we have. In fact, I think that's been one of the positives about this program how everyone came together to meet all of, the, all of the challenges that we have up to date. And believe me, there are plenty of challenges to put something uh, like this together. And I think to continue to do so, and the way we continue to do so is to focus the job on the job at hand, come together, uh, and then meet those challenges. Uh, what would you say to the, the die-hard McLaren F1 fan, Zach? Obviously, there's a bit of diversification. You go back into IndyCar, you've got the cycling team uh, too. Is, is, are they all sort of very much aligned? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we uh, have a great history in racing in different forms of, of motor racing, but uh, Formula One is uh, first and foremost important to us. We're laser-focused on that. That's what has all of our... Uh, attention and uh, very excited. We have some new partners that. Uh, I was going to uh, say it's getting busier on the front of the car. There, cars looking uh, looking great. You yeah. know that that too is a, a journey. We had great companies like Dell Technologies and Petrobras join us last year to help us go faster. Great technology partners, and then uh, Husky Chocolate is is new to the sport, which is is great. Estrella Galicia, who's been in the sport, have now joined us, and then of course our most recent announcement. Uh, with BAT as our new technology partner. So I think we have a lot to be uh, excited about this year. Okay, absolutely. Perhaps I could bo uh, finish with both of you. Again, a message to the McLaren fans from you, Gilles, and then from you, Zach, to, to wrap up from us. Well, come and join us in this journey. <laughs> you know, it's uh, certainly been exciting. Yeah. From you, Zach? I just want to thank everyone. You know, our fans, the racing team, all of our supporters. Uh, we have some tremendous support, and that motivates everyone back here at the factory. Well, so cheers to that. I uh, really appreciate your time. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. But we hope it will be a very exciting season for McLaren, Gilles Deferrin, and Zach Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to Zach and Jill. We're all excited to hear the roar of Formula One engines again. Just a few days' time as we get going in Barcelona for eight days of pre-season testing before the green light in Melbourne on the 17th of March. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our presentation on stage here at McLaren. Thank you to the two drives, to Zach, to Jill, and most of all, McLaren's employees who helped us unveil the beautiful MCL 34 here today. To the media partners and fans and to everyone watching around the world for being part of this special event. We're set for another fascinating year of Formula One racing. You can watch every single race this season on Sky Sports F1. We'll also be bringing you all the news and analysis with coverage from the pre-season test from next Monday, so you won't miss a second of the action. From now, uh, though, from us all here at McLaren, thank you very much. Yeah.